Hey Hi guys. guys, welcome back to our channel. It's been a long time since we filmed for this channel. Yeah, we are sorry. We're, yeah. we're lazy. We're lazy. We're also not lazy it's because we've been so busy with other things. So busy. But the first thing to go, sadly, at the moment is this channel because it's lower down our priority list. Um, but hopefully it won't always be that way. Yeah, and you've got to be able to do that in life, right? Yeah. Rather than you can't just grow in every direction. It's just not no. it's not possible. Even despite what social media might tell you. Exactly. So we asked some of you guys to send some questions in and we figured while we are currently on this beautiful motor, motorway in Central Florida yeah. that we would um, answer them for you. Yeah, we're on our way to Tampa. We're on our way home actually. We're going to have a little bit of an explore of Tampa before our flight this evening. Um, but yeah, we've got 55 minutes, so let's answer. This won't be 55. This won't be, imagine. <laughs> Buckle up. So this one, the answer is no. Can <laughs> Keegan play his favorite piano piece for us? Not right Not now. Not right now. <laughs> I'm sure we could make that happen though. Um, no. No, fine. I'm, I'm not, <clears throat> because I'm out of practice again, because that's been quite low down the priority list. Yeah. It's, I've just, I've not been keeping up with it as much as I would like to, so. Is that on your list for going home? I feel like I'll do myself. Mm, like to prioritize it or not really? No, not at the minute, because there's so much which you will see. Yeah. Uh, we've got so many things going on at the minute. Um, I'm, I'm not, but that said, something is better than nothing. So I'm still doing my lessons and I'll still do a little bit here and there. But whereas I used to be quite strict with carving time out to do half an hour, you know, here, an hour this day, did it. like I used to be quite good at doing that. I haven't got the brain space yeah. um, or the will to do it at the minute. So there's no point kidding myself. But you have a myself. tinkle every now and yeah, then. Yeah, exactly, yeah. If I get a spare 10, 15 minutes, I might jump on it. So I just, I'm keeping my hand in at the minute. Yeah. Because the trick is, don't go backwards. Just stay where Just you stay are. where you are when you can't move forwards. Yeah. Good tip. The next most liked one, higher up. It sounds like I'm asking this, but I'm not. Keegan, what first attracted you to Joel? How did you break the ice? <laughs> Well, I'm listening. I suppose I would would be lying if I said it wasn't because I thought he was good looking. Um, Thank you. Because you have to be attracted to yeah, somebody, right? That is probably the first thing everyone notices about everyone, isn't it? So. Yeah. And then, I don't know, because it certainly wasn't social media, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a repulsion, if anything. Um, um, yeah, whiny, whiny social media, Joe, is not my vibe. No. Um, but I also know that that's not Joel, so mm. um, I don't know. We just got we did a podcast and semi stayed in touch, and mm -hmm. then just got chatting. And I, I just liked, liked your vibe the cut of my jib, the cut of your jib, yeah. Yeah, but first of all, I thought you were fit, yeah. Looks the same, um, about you, not me. <laughs> were the kids' mum hesitant to have the kids in your vlogs? I don't know. I mean, as parents, you, um, I feel like all these questions are at me. I know. Um, I think, as parents that have split up, if you want to have uh, an amicable and drama-free relationship, I think you have to appreciate that while the kids are with their other parent, their other parent has their best interests at heart. Yeah. And if you don't think that, then I would suggest don't have kids with people. Oh, yeah. I think that might be the case. I mean, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but... Um, also, I think the kids are old enough where I imagine their mum would feel a bit like, well, if if they're happy to do that and they want to do that, which they do, yeah, it, then well, it's like, fine. Yeah, exactly that. I think it would have been different if, you know, they were three and five years old yeah. and they were kind of being hoard out, yeah. for want of a better phrase. Um, Whenever but, the kids are on camera, they want to be on camera. Yeah. It's never a case of us going, right, getting the camera out now. Kids, come on, yeah, perform. Yeah, like, not pushy show mums. No. Um, or dads. <laughs> um, well, that's been my dream to be a, a stage mum one day where I'm like, with my child going, come on, darling, go. And they're like, no, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, you're doing it. That, but, that sounds helpful. I know. But I just think that, you know, when you watch stage mums or something on TV, I just think... Dance moms. Dan, dance moms. They're hilarious. They're awful, but hilarious. And I was like, I want to be like that, but I'm never going to have kids, so I won't be like that. <laughs> yeah, so their mummy's their mummy's fine. 
<laughs> what are the top three places each of you want to visit, assuming no barriers like time, finances, or political stuff? New, uh, New, New Zealand. Zealand. Definitely New Zealand. Other than that, I haven't got anywhere where I'm like, I'm, I must go there. No. Um, New Zealand. I would like to go to like Massachusetts or like Salem, like the places where it's quite old in the US and they had witch trials. I'm fascinated by like the witch trials in the US. So I would like to go somewhere like that. Italy. We've Italy. Italy. Yeah, neither of us have been to Italy. Um, um, when I say I appreciate Italy, it's very wide and varied. Yeah. So all of it. Yeah, literally all North, of it. North, south, the Malfi Coast. Um, Rome. Yeah. Tuscany. Not, not so bothered about Venice, apparently it stinks. Oh yeah, I've heard that. In regards to health, what would you recommend for a couple to do together, both physically and healthfully? Healthfully. Which is interesting, because we've actually just, post-holiday, like most people, you've overeaten a little bit, you've indulged a little bit, which is good, that's healthy, you're on holiday, relax. But, you know what it's like when you're planning going home, and we've come up with a way to try and motivate ourselves together and help each other to lose weight. And I, we saw this study that was saying it's couple people who lose weight together with their partner, they achieve more than people doing it on their own. So yeah, I don't know. What would you recommend for a couple to do in order to you well, know, for health? Well, I think the first thing is to. Uh, get clear on what you want to do and why you want to do it and mm -hmm. explain it to the other person because it's really easy and partner, people in partnerships will say and sometimes it'll be 100% accurate and sometimes it's from a sense of obligation where they'll go oh but you don't need to change and I love you just how you are and blah 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 and as sweet as that is if somebody feels that they want to change or get healthier, more exercise, whatever it might be, then explaining to another per and another person goes, oh, we well, don't need to, that can cause friction. So first of all, getting clear on that and saying, you know, I don't feel as sexy as I'd like to, or my clothes are feeling a little bit tight and I feel a bit self-conscious. I don't want to be in photographs. I don't want to take my top off at the beach. I don't, whatever it might be, various things for various people. So that would be number one. And then hold each other to account. Like if you've set a goal and you said, this is what I want to achieve and this is how I'm going to do it and this is, you know, this is my action plan. Let your partner know and then ask them to make sure that they don't let you off. Because it's really easy to go, should we get a takeaway? And you go, oh, well, do you want a takeaway? Um, well, is that, you know, and rather than going, no, you said you were going to do this. So no, we're not, we'll make a meal. Well, that's why what we've done personally is we've taken a, we're paying into account some money each. And then if one of us meets our goals, which we've set and the other one doesn't, then the person who achieves it only gets half their money back. So you're basically, you're invested in the other person's progress yeah. financially, which I think will help spur us on. And then if we both do it, we get the money back. So. And if we both don't do it, it all goes to a cause that we don't like. Yeah, a cause that we don't support. So that way the pressure's on. Then, you, then you, otherwise you fund in that way. But yeah. you, you don't have to do that. We're just doing that as a yeah, just a bit of extra something, something. But definitely just find something that you enjoy together as a couple as well. Like obviously do your fitness journey separately, but find something that you enjoy. If previously you enjoyed stuffing your faces while sat on the sofa, I mean, we've done that. We, we enjoy that occasionally. Well, that's why like, most people overeat. Exactly, together. Whereas, if you're like, especially in summer, in the warmer months, you're like, well, instead of doing that, why don't we go for an hour's walk together? And that way, you've you've sort of replaced the quality time, but with something that's going to benefit both of you. Yeah. So this one says, what's your favourite memory as a couple? And then what your, what's your favourite memory with the kids? So you've, you've got way more to choose from than I do with the kids, but let's start with the first one. What's your favourite memory as a couple? I thought the question meant with the kids, like as a couple with the kids. Oh, okay, well we could do it that way. Um, what's our favorite memory as a couple? I don't know, but I, I'd have to sit and think for a long time about a specific favorite memory, but I really enjoy our trips to Edinburgh together yeah. where there's no pressure to do anything except have fun. 
<laughs> and all we're doing is laughing, going to see comedy shows together, eating, drinking. It's just a really nice time. Yeah, uh, Edinburgh sprung to mind for me just because it's, it feels like it's our thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, like we do it together each year. I remember back when we were newly dating, um, before it, anyone knew on the internet, you took me to Revo Abbey which was really cute, and you packed a picnic in your bag. There was some cake that your sister had made us, and, and oh, we yeah, just sat and had nice. a picnic in the Abbey. And we drove to the East Coast as well, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, and day trips are nice. Yeah. And with the kids, I assume you mean all of us with the kids. Florida was good last year, like we said, yeah. didn't we come in this time without the kids felt a bit? Not like Just not the same. Just not the same, yeah. yeah. Even though we, we, you know, we've not been to parks and things like that. But just day trips yeah. we've had with the kids, haven't we? Where we've been to Burnsall, Blackpool, Blackpool was yeah. good. The day out at Blackpool. It's just the things as well that happen on those trips unintentionally. Like a Blackpool, what springs to mind is Fletcher getting a nosebleed on a ride and all the blood being down him. And he was fine. Like he came off the ride, like he smiling. Nose. Yeah, he gets nosebleeds. He gets nosebleeds, but it, it's just funny. Like it was stained in blood, or like the things that we get like things that slightly go wrong but we now laugh about as a family like I think it's really nice being in Florida and Fletcher thinking that a boulevard was a spoolevard yeah uh, uh, so yeah he thought it was spoolevard not boulevard which is really funny yeah I don't know it's just simple things really yeah it's isn't it? little things that become like in jokes don't they in yeah the, in, the, in the family yeah but yeah we definitely miss them this trip I think whilst Florida's fun regardless I've had fun with you we've had fun together I think Florida to me is sort of now doing it with the kids it's sort of made for families I think and kids like it's yeah. just so fun with us all playing in the pool and yeah. um, we didn't play at all in the pool no <laughs> we just read our books did Keegan ever expect he'd become a vlogger on his own or was that a Joel influence I love peeking into your family life you two are good partners in life and the kids are great doggies too I didn't force Keegan to become a vlogger, I just want to say. No. You are right there? Yeah, just burnt him. No, I'd flirted with the idea of it for ages. And you had the channel because you had your podcast on there and stuff. Yeah. The and first I, locker. Yeah, exactly, and I'd put stuff on there. The thing that turned me off vlogging was editing. Mm. I hate editing. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. I hate doing it with my social media. Yeah, because, just because I'm not good at it and it feels like it's a waste of time. Not everyone can be a one-stop production shop. Right, and I don't say this to toot my own horn, but I love the filming, I love the editing, I love the putting together. But just because someone doesn't like the editing doesn't mean that they shouldn't, you know, film, yeah. like shouldn't be good at like filming themselves and saying things. And it's just a different skill set, isn't it? But it was good, obviously, having Joel there who's done it and being able to yeah. bounce ideas off about A, what to do and B, do I need do I need to edit it? And you know, yeah. Joel gave he was like, it's good for you to edit it yourself because then you learn how to record it better. Yeah. Which sounds it sounds a bit daft, but once you've done it and you've edited all the ums and ers and ahs and things out, which takes a lot longer, you compose yourself a lot more when you speak mm. to camera and things like that rather than rushing. Yeah. So I'm glad I did it, and I did get better at, at editing, and then we decided to turn it into a yeah. joint channel anyway, but... Bearing in mind, Keegan has a whole other business to run. Like, what I do, basically, is, apart from voiceovers and stuff, is full-time social media. So, like, I can spend the time investing in editing skills and software and spending time on that, whereas Keegan's literally running another business, and this channel was just a hobby for you because it wasn't earning enough money for it to be a significant amount of yeah. your income. Yeah, you have to put the time and effort into things that are going to earn you money, and not necessarily always in the short term. Sometimes you have to invest in yourself time to, to get a financial reward later down the line mm. but I was never going to become a full time vlogger, mm -hmm. it was always going to be things that were going to either be to, or to do with the coaching business mm -hmm. or now we've got obviously the podcast so Joel carries you know, does a lot in and around this um, YouTube channel just because I you know, I was straight up with Joel and said I don't have the capacity to, to be able to pull my weight equally with this channel 
and that's kind of where I'm at. So we've been able to find a way to to make it work. Um, but if you yeah, if you're doing it individually, it's like Joel did it for years on his own. It's it's a slog. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I'm used to it. Yeah. It's like any skill, you've got to you've got to put the reps in to be good at it. Yeah, definitely. And, got, and there's no substitute for hard work. No. If you had the time to devote to it, is there any subject you'd like to formally study solely because you're interested in it? For example, I'd love to study architecture at university level, even though I have no interest in working as an architect. That's a good question. I've never been asked that ever in my years on the internet. Mine is very easy because I spoke about it on my Instagram page earlier this week. I was like, you know what? I'd love to study interior, interior design, but not with like, to try and match colors and move boards and textures in terms of like throughout history. So I'd love to be able to go, oh, that's Art Deco. Oh, look at those pillars. That's a Corinthian pillar, which comes from Greece and da da da. Oh, that's Jacobean, that's da da da. I'd love to be able to learn about history and design, not just interior design, design in general and architecture, like you said, just to be able to talk about things. Yeah. I think. Psychology, I actually, uh, when I was playing rugby full time, I looked into doing a psychology degree. Um, although I, I think if I wasn't a coach, I would be interested in working as a psychologist mm. or a psychotherapist, because uh, psychologists are doctors. Or history. And now, what you part? History. Now, what part of history? I don't particularly know. I don't have a particular preference. I, lo I like modern history. I like World War One, World War Two. I've also just read a book about. Uh, English kings and queens up until Elizabeth the first and you know the the politics in and around the monarchy and I love I also love like Romans and Vikings I love myth you love mythology. I, I love mythology as well so yeah there's lots of stuff that I, I would just study for the sake of it yeah. and to be fair I think there's nothing stopping us is there not like you don't have to do it formally in, in order to do it. Like you, your knowledge of mythology has come about from a natural interest from reading up about it and stuff. And the same with history. Like I think with me, with what I just said, I'm like, there's nothing stopping. I just need to start Googling it, start getting some books on it and just consume it in my spare time. So it also depends on obviously your time and yeah. your energy and stuff that you've got. Definitely. When you move to your next home, assuming that you have the space, would you get another dog? No. <laughs> that was very, very quick. Three is uh, too many. Three is too many. We nearly said yes to a third. No, we didn't. <laughs> no, we did in terms of, I think our hearts would go, oh yeah, go on. But we can't. Like, to have three dogs is absolute chaos. There's chaos enough with two. And you know what sealed the deal for us with that brief thought of could we, when someone needs to rehome their dog, we were like, could we? That immediately shut down because so we went, Already getting people to look after our two dogs is quite a big ask when they go to stay at Amber's, your sister, or yeah. when they go to stay with our friends, or yeah, or if we, we all go over to our friends and it's like, yeah. pack up the dogs, pack up the kids, it's pack just up too our much. Three, three is too much, yeah. Like Ace Ventura said, three darts is too much, three dogs is yeah. too much. <laughs> and we, we're lucky that we've only got two small dogs, but they're both big characters and they're both uh, they both have a lot of energy, yeah. So yeah, it's, it would be one thing if they were very well behaved and very quiet, yeah. but they're not. Oh, this is interesting. This is going on from design. Do your decor styles complement each other and how do you navigate that? It seems Joel is more traditional and eclectic, cow figurine and penguin lamp, <laughs> and Keegan is more modern, streamlined and functional. Can't wait for the future new Hurstwood home. So excited for your family when that chapter begins. I initially thought that this would be a difficulty a contention a contentious yeah. point because i do love traditional so yeah so did i i was like i don't want any of that hideous yeah tat i was subscribed to period living magazine i was yeah. renovating victorian chairs i was and i still love all of that and like good keegan's taste i do not fully I can't see the same thing that he sees in modern sometimes, or that's what I thought at first. I was like, this is going to be really hard. But the proof was in the pudding when we first did one of the bathrooms and we went to choose tiles and we both loved the same tiles. Then we did the second bathroom, our ensuite, yeah. chose the same tiles, loved the same tiles. And now over time, 
I think you've gone slightly more appreciative of certain traditional elements mm. and I've gotten slightly more appreciative of modern elements and we've sort of got this new mix. Yeah, I think yeah, I think like anything you have to find your way with what your taste is. Mm. And I think originally when I first moved into my, my first house, it was very Scandinavian, minimalist, yeah, n not a lot of tap. Mm. But then as you as you start to pick things up, not that I'm a, a hoarder or anything, and I certainly don't keep as much stuff as Joel does, but... Not true. Your bookshelves in the living room, it's full of tap, which is all that's, yours. That's what I'm coming to, thank you, dear. Um, is that you start to accrue things and go, oh, do you know what? Actually, the sentiment, the sentimentality and the mixtures of things from, you know, Joel's cow and Gandalf and all yeah. the different stuff that we have on the bookcase. I, I like that. That's because that represents us as people. Yeah, and it's original. Like the thing I think with lots of people's homes, when they just, everything's from Ikea, and I love Ikea, and like we've got pieces yeah, from Ikea. IKEA. But it's like when everything is Ikea, when add, everything is add clear. Add your own bits to things. Yeah, when someone walks into your house, what are they going to do? And also, things are conversation starters. The amount of people that will come in and point at something on our shelves and go, oh, that's cool, or that's unique, or what, where do you get that? Yeah. Like, I want someone to walk into our home and, and have things to say about it, rather than someone just going, oh, it looks like a showroom. Yeah, it needs character, right? Yeah. So to, to go back to my original point is when you first start to find your own way with your own house, you, you're building your character, or your, your, your taste, your design, however you want to word it. So, yeah. yeah, I think we've, uh, I think we've kind of meshed that. And yeah. sometimes Joel will say, oh, I really like this, but I know you won't. Mm. Um, yeah, and then yeah, so and, and the other way around as well. Yeah, I think we we are very aligned in color schemes. We seem to like similar colors and things like that. But yeah, it comes down to like items. Like maybe if we're choosing a lamp, we might be a bit different on that. But yeah, I was surprised that we have actually not had any issues with decor. No, which is good. Keen and Joel, I think you're both great. Thank Me you. too. <laughs> <laughs> Which house do you think the sorting hat would choose for you? Well, I'm a Ravenclaw. I've done the tests. and uh, But I think as I'm getting older, I'm getting more Slytherin, which is, I think, worrying. Uh, uh, my my test came back. I was Slytherin, wasn't I? You tested positive for Slytherin. I tested positive for Slytherin. <laughs> which is very, very us, I think. You're definitely Slytherin. Yeah. And I'm definitely Ravenclaw because I'm very clever. Although I feel like people, some people watching always think, because you talk about lots of interesting things like history and politics and things like that, everyone's like, oh, Keegan is so wise, Joel. Keegan is so wise. As if I'm not. And I'm like, I am clever. Well, clever and wise are not the same thing. No, I'm not wise. <laughs> I'm clever. <laughs> okay, Keegan, this is for both of us, but what is the hardest part about being self-employed and what is the most gratifying aspect of being self-employed? And does Keegan have clients who are not in the UK? Keegan does have clients all over the world. Mm -hmm. US, Australia, Europe, Ireland. Um, so yes. Hardest thing about being self-employed is there's nowhere to hide. So if things go wrong, it's on you. Mm -hmm. Which is ge is generally something that I would say is a, a, a an ideal that people should adopt about their lives in general because no one else is responsible. Don't get me wrong; that doesn't mean that bad things don't happen to you. But how we react and view them is completely on us. But that's the thing with being self-employed; it's it's on you, and especially when you start to have like I have staff. If you know, I have to. Put them first. Leaders eat last. I think he's a book by a guy called Simon Sinek. I've not actually read it, but that's the principle behind it. Most rewarding thing is is because of the same thing. When it goes well and it succeeds, it's because you did it. No one gave you a handout. Nobody had a favorite. You know, uh, like a, a, to give someone a promotion. If if you've done well, then again that's on you. So mm -hmm. you, you you live by the self-employed sword and die by it. Yeah. No, what do it you is like hard. about being self-employed, Joel? I like being my own boss and going, I don't feel like it, like tomorrow is an upload day. No, today is an upload day for me. And I've just been feeling today like I haven't edited and I can't, I really can't be bothered. And sometimes 
most of the time, if that happens, I go, well, do it anyway. And that's why I stick to a schedule because I have the discipline. But I think because we're on holiday as well, and it's the last day and we're going to the airport, I was like, no, actually, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to just edit one ready for Thursday. And I'm glad that I can do that, that there's no one breathing down my neck saying you must do that. Yeah. But negative is that no one's the boss of you, so no one's there to discipline you to do it. And if you don't work, you don't earn. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd say that is the negative. What are your favourite pastimes or activities to do with one another, with the kids, and also alone? I'm loving the podcast. I'm a bisexual female and still find it very entertaining and great advice. Thank oh, you. That's good. I'm glad Thank about you. that. That Thank is you. nice. Uh, favourite pastime together? Go. Together? I'm enjoying the dates that we've been doing because they're different each time. Like, I wouldn't say we've got anything we do on the regs. I think we're just quite good at spending time together and like yeah like yeah. say giving things a, sh a shot whether it's going somewhere new mm -hmm. trying something different yeah we like a road trip don't we in day trips yeah well, I do anyway yeah no I like a day trip I think also if we are thinking about saying regular it's really boring but after a long busy day it is nice especially if we've been busy separately to after dinner come back sit on the sofa watch a TV show we've been watching together with a tub of high protein ice cream you know isn't that nice yeah well yeah it is yeah or, or even just sitting and reading yeah together mm -hmm. um, or we go to bed and read go we're yeah. literally like old nanas yeah um, favourite pastime with the kids again it'll be it's just little things like day trips there's life to be lived in the in-betweens like you know it's nice to go on holidays and day trips mm -hmm. and stuff but I also enjoy I ferry the kids around from school and um, football practice and mm -hmm. just the life that's going on in between. I enjoy yeah. spending time with them. Looking forward to seeing them this week. Yeah, and, me too. Um, so I just like being around the people that I love. Yeah. Yeah. We do occasionally sit down and play games as well at the dinner table, yeah. which is really nice. Or we'll have like a movie night or something, mm -hmm. won't we? And yeah. Um, and favourite pastime alone? Well, we've spoken about this, haven't we? It's been a, it's been a, a subject in our house because, mm. like, we need to have something for our set for ourselves. Yeah. Like, I used to have rugby, mm. which I don't have have anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been actually actively trying to think of something to kind of fill that gap. Yeah. You've been in the yeah, same for me. Like, I definitely have enough pastimes alone. Like, I like going on walks by myself. I like going and working in a coffee shop by myself. I like going into Leeds and doing a workout class. But what I've realised is I don't have any social plans with people. So I feel like I have enough time alone, but I don't have enough time with other people socially. Like, all my social time is spent mainly with Keegan or when I go to London with friends. but So that's something like trying to work on um, because I also put me, can't be bothered. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Ugh. Right, guys, we've been recording for half an hour, but we've still got lots of questions. So what we're going to do is wrap this one up here and do a part two, which you'll see within due course. <laughs> <laughs> Not promising any time scales here. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll, we might gather some for another Q&A in the future. Yeah, thank you for all your questions. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you very much. Yeah, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.